Hey, what's up everyone? Christina, nurse practitioner here. Today I'm going to go over Bell's palsy, also known as facial paralysis, affecting cranial nerve seven. I will also include causes, common signs and symptoms, a quick demo review on how to examine cranial nerve seven and treatment. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and download link in description for a free quiz. Okay, roll the intro. Bell's palsy is one of the most common facial paralysis in the United States that affects about 15,000 to 40,000 people per year. Bell's palsy affects the seventh cranial nerve, also known as the facial nerve. The cause can be originated from a virus, inflammation, or a surgery. Bell's palsy is not contagious. However, if the cause was from a virus such as herpes, the underlying illness is contagious. However, scientists believe when a virus that was once dormant, which is asleep, is reactivated, it can be the cause for the facial paralysis that could have been induced from stress or from an infection. So for the patient that presents to the urgent care, emergency room, or perhaps as an inpatient, has a sudden onset of mild to total paralysis of one side of the face that results in a facial droop. You want to rule out and make sure it is not a stroke. I just did a video on cranial nerves 1 through 12. Feel free to watch the link in description below. However, with cranial nerve 7, a normal assessment would consist of having the patient close their eyes in an attempt to open eyes against resistance, have patients smile, show their teeth, raise their eyebrows, and wrinkle their forehead, and puff out their cheeks. For the patient with Bell's palsy, they would not be able to do any of these facial expressions and would have difficulty with closing eyes or smiling with the loss of taste has been reported. The recovery occurs between two weeks and can take as long as six months for full recovery. As most recover with full facial control, some treatment options would include placing the patient on steroids, which is an anti-inflammatory to help reduce and decrease the inflammation, and antivirals such as acyclovir. Physical therapy to allow for adequate rehab to regain strength of oral and facial movements, artificial tears to protect eyesight, and an eye patch to protect the patient's vision. Some nursing considerations you want to promote or care, have patients chew on the unaffected side, encourage the use of facial accessories and protecting the eyes from injury. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications. Take care.